bum, 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 bum. Jack Sparrow has become the most recognizable of all pirates. But just how accurate is he to his historical counterparts? Let's start it with the name. Jack was a common nickname for the name John, a very popular name, and it is possible that Jack Sparrow was named after John Rackham, often known as Calico Jack. Most of Rackham's history has been fictionalized, and his bumbling, flamboyant reputation isn't dissimilar from Jack Sparrow. In this 18th century woodcut, he even looks a bit like him, the same sort of roguish appearance. There was another pirate known as Captain Jack. He and his crew were captured by the Spanish. Jack told them he was the captain, and that he had a legitimate commission. Whilst his shipmates were treated poorly, Jack was given food and lodgings. He and the crew eventually managed to escape, and it sounds like something right from the movies. But it's unlikely that Jack Sparrow was inspired by any real historical figures, especially these obscure ones. Inspiration seems to primarily have been drawn from cartoon characters and rock stars. Historian Giles Milton claims that Jack Sparrow was inspired by the real-world pirate John Ward, alias Jack. He pirated the Mediterranean during the early 1600s and eventually turned Turk, that is, converted to Islam, and sailed with the Algerians. His nickname was allegedly Sparrow. Jack Sparrow's name is likely an alias. These were often adopted by pirates to protect their true identities. And there were a few pirates named after birds. At least two were named Swan, and I guess you can include Francis Drake. Drake is a male duck. <coughs> Moving on to his appearance. His eyeliner is an oriental cosmetic called Kohl. It functions as a form of sunshade. I've never heard of European pirates or sailors using it. He has several tattoos, and some sailors in the early 1700s did have them, though they were known as gunpowder spots, because they were made from having crushed gunpowder rubbed into your skin. Most of the motifs were religious in nature, like Christ, the Jerusalem cross, or Adam and Eve. He also has the letter P branded in his arm, standing for pirate. Branding was a common punishment in the colonies. You were branded with the first letter of the crime, such as A for adultery, or SL for seditious libel. Places of branding included the chest, cheek, shoulder, and hands. If an indentured servant was caught escaping, his forehead was branded with the letters FT, signifying fugitive traitor. But were pirates branded? If a pirate was caught, nine times out of ten, he was hanged. Some were even hanged without a trial, from the yardarm of the ship that captured them. That being said, I found several instances from the East India Company, where people convicted of piracy were actually branded with the letter P. But they were branded on the foreheads, so the screenwriters admitted to Jack's arm brand being historically inaccurate. I actually disagree, since documents also mention pirates being branded on their hand, so the arm is not too far-fetched. That being said, the forehead is a big deal. Everyone can always see the crime you committed. Maybe this is the reason for Jack always keeping long hair and a bandana. But it would also be kinda cool if he just boldly announced his piracy by showing off the P, a bit like Toadvine in Blood Meridian. I should also note that after the pirates were branded, they were deported, presumably as penal workers or indentured servants. He wears a mustache and a short, braided beard. Facial hair was unpopular in the 1700s, and most men, including pirates, would have gone shaved. That said, some definitely went against the fashion, and we do have paired woodcuts of pirates like Henry Avery and Charles Vane, maintaining facial hair similar to Jack Sparrow. We know of at least one pirate that braided his beard, Blackbeard. According to an eyewitness, he let his beard grow and tied it up in black ribbons. Soldiers and sailors were known to cue their hair into a single braid with a ribbon, but we don't know what blackbeards looked like. A single big braid, two, or even many smaller. So Jack's beard isn't implausible, but he would have tied it with ribbons, not these little beads. His hair would have been worn in a similar manner, one or two cues. Dreadlocks existed and were worn by Africans, many of whom were pirates. But I've never heard of them being worn by whites, at least not in the period. Some pirates who lived with natives adapted their looks. Pirates who lived with the Kuna Indians in Darien, for example, often got tattooed in their fashion. These tattoos included animals and birds. Maybe the real-life Jack Sparrow had lived with the Kuna. 
so it's not impossible that pirates who spent time with Africans might have tied their hair into dreadlocks. But I've never heard of it actually happening. Neither have I heard of anyone weaving trinkets into their hair. This seems to have modern rather than historical inspirations. Jack likes his jewelry. He doesn't wear any earrings, which gets a thumbs up from me. Sailors weren't known for wearing earrings, unless if they were Dutch. In 18th century England, they were associated with upper class hipsters, known as fops. He does, however, wear rings at all times. A pirate might wear rings when chilling in a bar or trying to impress a lady, but in a fight or at sea, it was outright dangerous. They were liable to break your fingers. He wears a shirt, a vest, and a coat. All of these together would have been too hot for the Caribbean, for the most part. Most ordinary folk used to wear a shirt, sometimes with a vest over it. Gentlemen usually wore a vest and a shirt, and pirates often went in jackets and coats with a shirt or nothing under it. In the second movie, and I think the fourth, he sticks to a vest and a shirt, and it's definitely his most accurate depiction. He wears his cutlass in a belt swung over his chest, called a baldric. By the 1730s, cutlasses were worn from the regular belt. Baldrics were only used for heavy blades like the broadsword, which Barbosa uses. He wears a white sash. Some pirates did, but they were more common with the Spanish, French, and Dutch. Not so much with the English. He also wears two belts, both of which are too big, and would have impeded his breathing and movement. He has a pistol tucked in his belt, the lock on the outside. If a pirate wore his pistol in his belt, he preferred to keep the lock against his body and the handle sticking outwards. This protected the priming powder, kept the pistol in place, and made it more easily accessible. It was also iconic for pirates to tie their pistols in a silk sling and keep it around their shoulders. He has a kerchief tied around his head, which wasn't so popular among sailors as we're led to believe, but it happened. More troubling is his cocked hat, or tricorn as we call it. It is heavily associated with pirates, but it didn't really become sailors' fashion until the 1730s, which is after the golden age of piracy. Until then, they wore just regular-looking hats with round brims, often folded or cropped on the sides, like a baseball cap. If the movies take place in the 1730s, it's not implausible to find sailors wearing the tricorn. The problem is that people have taken curse too literally and interpreted the tricorn as the go-to pirate headwear, rather than something exclusive to this narrow time in history. I recently saw the thumbnail for a video about the medieval pirate, where she is depicted as wearing a tricorn, you know, 300-something years before the hat was even invented. Additionally, Jack's hat is made from leather, whereas hats of the time were made of cloth. But worst of all are the boots. These boots never existed in the period, and boots were never worn unless you were riding a horse. Especially not on a ship, you just couldn't keep your balance. Real pirates went barefoot, even on land, or wore simple shoes, with or without socks. But boots? No, never. So, to summarize Jack's appearance, it isn't entirely implausible, but he's far from what most pirates would have looked like. Any historical connotations in his appearance are pure coincidence. Every piece in his appearance are taken from modern sources, are literary devices, or part of Hollywood appearance. Boots, headbands, coats and sashes come from Hollywood movies. Hollywood were, in turn, inspired by 19th century paintings by Howard Pyle. While Pyle's art did have some historical inspiration, it was also inspired by contemporary Mexican fashion, and by gypsy culture. Let's talk a bit about his personality. Jack likes to drink rum. Pirates would drink whatever was the local beverage. In the northern colonies, beer. In the Indian Ocean, arak. In Europe and the South Sea, wine and brandy. In the Caribbean, sugar plantations allowed for mass production of rum, so it became their go-to drink. It was usually mixed with sugar and lime juice into rum punch. He also walks with a seaman's swagger, which sailors were known to do, being so used to the movements of a ship. He is known for being eccentric and a bit crazy. In real life, pirates were known to be lazy, pretentious, violent, even a bit insane at times. It has often been blamed on their excessive drinking, but it is also possible that venereal diseases or the cures against them were to blame. Syphilis was treated by having mercury pressed into your urethra, and this would have severe effects on your mental stability. What about his motivations? Jack Sparrow wants to retake his ship and live life as a free pirate. 
Pirates were not known for being attached to their ships and were very pragmatic about them. Whenever they found a ship that was slightly better, they would abandon their old one, usually because ships started rotting way faster in tropical waters. Wanting to live freely is certainly how many pirates wish to live, but that lifestyle was dependent on them using violence to acquire food and necessities from innocent people, something which we never see in the movies. Let's take a look at Jack Sparrow's flag. It features two crossed bones and a skull with a bandana looking sideways at a bird. Pirate flags with skulls and crossed bones were some of the most common, though we don't know what they looked like exactly. Maybe the skull looked sideways, maybe right at you, maybe slightly to the side. It probably varied. The design with a bandana is a modern invention attributed to Henry Avery, who was never described as flying any such flags. In the 18th century, bandanas were neither associated with death nor with pirates. It's a product of 19th century romanticism. Neither have I heard of any pirate flags with birds in them. Some flags had hourglasses with wings, which were a common symbol of death in the period. Or, well, time fleeting away. Now let's look at Jack Sparrow's backstory. The pirate's lore is quite deep. Outside of the movies, it was expanded upon by lots of books, comics and video games. The way I see it, these were all cash grabs from Disney. It doesn't align with the intentions of the film creators, who made their movies in an isolated bubble. So I'm purely going to use the movies as a source. And yeah, I am excluding the fifth movie, because it was written and produced by new people, retconned a lot of the old movies, and yeah, it's also pretty bad. By paying attention to a few of the scenes, especially a deleted scene from the third movie, we learn that Jack was hired by Cutler Beckett to transport a hundred slaves to the Caribbean. Jack decided that slavery was wrong, so he liberated his slaves. As a punishment, Beckett captured Jack, branded his forearm with a P for pirate, set fire to the Black Pearl, and sank her. Jack then got in contact with Davy Jones and asked him to raise his ship from the bottom of the sea, and he would sail her for ten years before paying Jones back with his soul. The reason why Davy asks Jack for a hundred souls in return for his freedom, well, it's because of those hundred slaves he liberated. I've never heard any stories of slave traders liberating their slaves. These people were considered the scum of the earth, and not by our modern standards. People at the time thought so. They would have pursued profits at any cost. Of course, there were sailors and regular individuals who expressed sympathy for slaves. But they seemed to have been a minority, and next to no one was willing to act on their feelings, mostly due to group pressure. If everyone was fine with slavery, what can one person do? Especially aboard a ship. A ship is a collective. Though there might be some guy calling the shots, everyone aboard is still looking out for their own interests. If they were getting into an unprofitable or dangerous situation, they would mutineer. Is it historically plausible that Jack could have hired a crew entirely sympathetic to slaves? I mean, it's not impossible, but a stretch. Especially considering the amount of degenerates found in his crews. Like, do you think this guy would not sell his own grandmother into slavery? The problem with doing stuff like this is that it gives people the wrong impression. Jack Sparrow liberates slaves, so every pirate must have done it. Which, you know, was far from the case. Pirates sold slaves and used them personally. It's really petty of Cutler to just burn the ship down simply to spite Jack. Scarily enough, a hundred slaves weren't that many. A ship the size of the Black Pearl could carry like 500. So it's not even that big of a loss. And you know, Cutler might take things personally, but he's a businessman first and foremost. The ship would also have been very valuable. Burning the ship seems like a good option if Cutler had no other alternative to spite Jack, but in this scenario, he was in full control. He then branded Jack with the letter P, and Jack then escaped. If you branded someone, like I explained earlier, you weren't going to execute them. The branding itself was the punishment. Everyone would see what you had done. Here's how I would have written Jack's backstory. One alternative is that he's an indentured servant employed as a slave overseer on Cutler's plantation. Due to his own condition, Jack develops sympathy for the slaves and helps a few of them escape. Cutler discovers it, captures Jack, and brands his forehead with the letters FT. Fugitive Trader. Moving on to the rest of Jack's backstory. After Jack raised the ship, he turned to piracy. He hired a crew and went hunting for the treasure at Ila de Muerto. When Jack revealed the location of the treasure, his crew mutineered against him 
and marooned him on a deserted island. Marooning was such a popular punishment that the pirates of the early 18th century took to calling themselves marooners. The reasons for marooning and the severity of it depended on the crime. If a pirate was marooned over political disagreements, then he'd usually be given enough tools and provisions to survive. But if he had seriously offended a crew, like stolen from them, he'd have his ears and nose cut off and left naked without anything. It isn't a big surprise that the crew mutineered against Jack. Throughout the series he withholds information, he rules his ship undemocratically, and in the second film we see that he keeps the rum behind a locked door. Pirates expected to drink as much as they wanted. If a pirate captain behaved like this, the crew would at least expect him to bring them lots of plunder, which Jack doesn't. He really has to be the worst pirate I've ever heard of. Oh wait, that's another Jack. So while Jack Sparrow isn't implausible, his costume and background are quite far-fetched from the period. But I still think you could make some changes to the character to make him more historically accurate, without having to compromise the entertainment value or philosophy of the character. I made a small illustration of what a more historically accurate Jack could have looked like. Now, I'm not an expert artist and I never claim to be anything of the sort. I simply wanted to put my rough ideas on paper and give you something of an idea. And no, I, I don't want to use an AI. Uh, so on the left we have a lightly dressed version, akin to Jack from the second movie. He wears more period appropriate clothing and equipment, including his iconic pistol, but tied into a silk sling, a method called the pirate fashion. I also gave him a bottle of Arak instead of rum, because I think it makes more sense for the story to take place in the Indian Ocean, partly because the Black Pearl is an East Indiaman. He also wears a so-called cropped hat, very popular with the buccaneers in the 17th and 18th centuries, and a headpiece which pirates seem to have actually designed themselves, unlike the tricorn. On the right we have a close-up of his face. Instead of dreadlocks, I gave him a braid, according to contemporary fashion. He has twisted his beard and tied it into braids in a similar way as soldiers and sailors did, and how Blackbeard might have done. Instead of having the letter P for pirate burn into his forearm, he has the letters FT burn into his forehead, for the aforementioned reasons. The black spots on his cheek and neck are to cover off his uh, syphilis marks, a disease very likely caught by a womanizer like Jack, and likely the reason behind his eccentric behavior. Since I removed most of his jewelry, I gave him an earring instead. These were sort of common with Dutch sailors, and also a few English fops, which Jack very well may have been, or tried to emulate. I replaced his tattoo with a marking from the Kuna Indians. Jack has a bird tattoo, and I found some Kuna patterns of birds that I figured would be relevant. And parts who lived with the Kuna were known to have patterns like these imprinted into their bodies, like the cheek, arms, etc. Lastly, I have a more dressed Jack. He wears a coat, socks, and fancier shoes. He's also wearing a small tricorn, which came into sailors' fashion in the 1730s. However, they wore them backwards, as he does here. To end the video, I have a little prompt for you. Draw me a historical Jack Sparrow as you imagine him, based on the history you learned yourself from my videos or other channels like Crew of the Fancy. Then either send me the artwork via my email address on screen, or post it in our Discord server. You'll find a link in the video description. The piece you're seeing on screen was made a while back by Magellus, imagining Jack Sparrow as a bayman, a group of pirate lumberjacks in the Yucatan Peninsula. In the next character analysis about Hector Barbosa, I will present all the artwork and discuss it. Or, if there's enough content, make its own video about it. I don't care about your skill as an artist. As long as you put effort into it and give me something to discuss, I'll have it on screen. Huge thanks to my generous channel members and Patreon supporters. In particular, Cole Freer, Max Dwick, 1660, Michaela Jans, Daniel Stryker, Sea Dog, Randall DeVere, Old Man Said, Krillov, and Nick Hooper. If you'd like to interact with me or fellow part enthusiasts, please check out the link to our Discord server in the video description. Hope to see you there. Cheers.